Hi, I'm Roy Clemens of Clemens and Clemens, and in this demonstration, we're going to talk about blending boards and how to prepare fiber for a fun and fancy weft. Now, the reason that we are specifically talking about weft is that a blending board is a woolen preparation tool. Uh, what we're going to end up with is a rolag, which is fiber wrapped around a core of air. And when you draft out of the end of the rolag, it's going to collapse around that core of air and give you a very uh, lofty, very good insulating yarn, something that is best used for your weft. Now, what I'm going to do here in this demonstration is I'm going to throw the kitchen sink at this blending board, but I'm going to tell you, you don't have to do all of these different things that I'm going to show you. You don't have to do them all at once. You might just want to use one technique to give your weft a little bit of pop or a little bit of shine or uh, just add a little fun character to it. Uh, but don't think that because I'm showing you all of these different things that you have to do all of them all of the time. Uh, the design phase of your own project is really up to you. I'm just going to show you all of the options. So what we're going to do is we'll start with a base layer of some wool and we are going to add in some bamboo, some silk, uh, some fire star, uh, some locks and these locks are really curly. I think they have a little bit of BFL. It's a mixed breed, so I think they have a little bit of BFL in them. These ones we're not going to card. We're going to leave them very curly and fun like this, uh, so they'll have lots of character uh, in that, that final yarn that we create. And then I have some more locks over here, and these ones we are going to card directly onto the blending board, and that will give us a little bit of texture, but without having the nice curly tails and, and ringlets. And so that'll let you see the difference between uh, using fiber that has already been processed and something that has not. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is move everything a little bit out of the way, give myself some space to work here. Okay, and I'll set aside my dowels. We don't need those right away, but we will need them soon. Same thing with my brush and the flicker. Now, typically a blending board is used at the edge of the table or in your lap. There are multiple keel holes here. If you're using these two uh, lower keel holes, you would use those uh, while you're working with the blending board sitting down and in your lap. And typically in this position, the top keel hole, we would use this at the edge of the table. Uh, unfortunately, my, my camera is a little bit of a fixed position, so if I try to do that, it would be way over here off camera, you wouldn't get to see it. So I'm going to use it with the keel sitting upright like this, uh, just in the middle of my table so you all have a very good vantage point of what I'm doing. Now you certainly can use the blending board on this tabletop uh, position if you want. I don't find it to be very ergonomic or very efficient. Okay, so again I'm doing this just so you have a, a good idea, uh, be able to see what it is that I'm doing here. So we're going to start with the base layer of fiber and this is wool that has gone through my drum quarter already. So this is a bat. And what I did is I split it down there and I'm gonna split it down again, make it a little bit smaller and maybe even one more time. Because when we're applying fiber to the blending board, our goal, especially if you're starting out, is to apply fiber in a thin and wispy manner. One of the things that we find quite often with people who are new to blending boards is that they apply way too much fiber. And when they do that, not only do they have trouble uh, physically making their Rolags, but when they take them to their wheel or drop spindle, they, they have a hard time spinning because if your uh, Rolag has too much fiber in it, it's not going to draft well, so it's not going to spin well. So one thing that we try to emphasize here, especially for people who are new to blending boards, is thin and wispy. And you can see it as I'm drafting this across the top and I'm applying this fiber, uh, there are a lot of blank spots. You, you can definitely see, especially if you're looking on the top view, you can see it's pretty light in here, pretty light in here. And uh, I'm trying not to apply too much fiber, especially knowing that I'm going to be putting a lot of things on top of this. Okay, we're going to be including all those different things that I talked about earlier and I just want to make sure that I get kind of a light uh, base layer all the way across here 
All right, so we did a pretty good job of that. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our brush. Okay, so this is a nylon bristle brush. If your blending board didn't come with one, uh, paint brushes or wallpaper brushes seem to work well, or you can always uh, purchase one as well. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we want to push the fiber down below the teeth of the carding cloth. The reason is when we remove this as a rollag, we're going to be drafting or pulling against those teeth. And so we wanna make sure that all the fiber, everything that we apply is going to be below the teeth. Now we're not gonna mash it down. We don't need it all the way at the bottom. We just need it so that all the fiber is below the teeth. So we're just going to brush it down and brush down. And again, and you can see this just kind of falling down, getting less kind of furry as I come all the way across here. Okay, and we can pull off our excess fiber. We can always just pat it into place here. There's a little bit over this edge. We'll just pull off all our extra bits here and toss them on the board. We can go ahead and use it just like that. So now we're gonna get into uh, our first little extra. And what do we wanna start with? Let's start with some bamboo. Okay, so this is, oh, I'm sorry, with some silk. This is Tessa silk. I might have, said, might have said bamboo earlier. Apologies if I did. So we're gonna pull this out. And again, we're still trying to say, stay thin and wispy. If we put this on in a thick clump, when the row lag collapses, uh, it's just gonna give us that thick clump and we're just gonna get a big matted piece in our hand. So we do wanna try and stay as thin and wispy as possible. And with something like uh, this silk uh, that has been processed, uh, you'll notice that sometimes it lays flat in one direction. And so you just twist it however it, it works in your hand to get it so that you can lay it thin and wispy and, and draft it out nice and thin. Okay, because that's really what we're looking for is, is just a little smattering of it. We don't need a whole lot of it here. And that's actually more than what I want. So I'll come back and again, just get it nice and thin. There we go. And we do want, uh, as much as possible, at least with this beginning technique that we're touching here, we do want all of the fibers uh, going in the same direction. Now, when we take this off of here, they're gonna be wrapped around the dowel and around that core of air. So that's how we're gonna get the woolen preparation. We could go sideways and, and diagonal with, with some of the fibers. Uh, that's a little bit more of an advanced technique. They spin a little bit differently. It's a little bit trickier. So especially when you're starting out, we wanna see just kind of head north to south with this from the handle to the bottom of the board. Okay, so that was fairly simple and that was our uh, Tussa Silk. Now let's pop over to a little bit. This is some uh, dyed silk, a different kind of silk. Let's just pull out a little bit of this. And we'll do the same kind of thing. Now, Now I'm gonna go in stripes here. I'm gonna kind of do some stripes of, of our different things that we're gonna work on here. You don't have to do that. You can put them just in one little spot. You can put it all the way across the board. You don't have to alternate. You can do whatever you want. Again, I'm doing this. This is just a demonstration. I'm giving you an idea of what you can do. And I give you free license to do whatever it is that you can come up with as far as a design when it comes to color and when it comes to blending different fibers and things like that, okay? So again, just making sure that those are all in place and then pressing them down below the teeth. There we go. Uh, let's pop on to our next thing. And instead of just popping over to uh, the nylon, let's go with some of these very curly bits of fiber. This looks like a lot of fun. Now I'm not gonna process these at all, okay? You notice I just packed it right down in there with my, my little packing brush. So these are gonna come out super curly. They're not going to draft out well. and I, I want that to happen intentionally, okay? It's gonna give us very little curly bits that kind of stand out when we, when we spin these. We'll have to make sure that uh, those little parts don't get drafted out well and we also make sure when we're spinning them that we trap them in uh, so that they can't come out because I mean nothing would be worse than having one of these fun little curls uh, in your, your weaving or in your, your finished knitting project and then you put it in the wash and it comes out because it, it wasn't trapped into the yarn so we do want to be careful about that 
And I'm just gonna put these right here. The reason I'm doing these, I, you can see I did uh, one section here, one section here, one section here. When we remove this with the dowel, what we're gonna do is we want about one and a half to two fiber lengths wrapped around the dowel itself. And with the fibers that we're working with here, they're about four inches long. And so we're gonna pull off one roll out here, one roll out here, and one roll out here. And that'll let us uh, trap each of these in here. If they were across the areas or the sections where I think the roll lags are going to lie, I'd have trouble removing them uh, with that, that roll lag or with the dowel when I'm trying to get my roll lags. Okay, so next let's do a little bit of this very shiny nylon. And uh, like the silk that we used before, a little bit of this does go a pretty long way. And you can see it, it opens right up there. Again, it kind of lays flat, it's its natural tendency. That's kind of the way that uh, this goes through the machine and is made. And we'll brush these on down. There we go, looking pretty good. And last but not least here, let's take just a little bit of fiber that has not been processed yet. So this is like that, that white fiber we were working with before hasn't been processed, but we're gonna do this just slightly differently in that we're gonna take the fiber and we're going to drag it across the top of the blending board. Okay, so if you were using hand cards, you would say I'm charging the carder, basically getting it ready to card. Okay, kind of dragging them across like that. And then I'll take my flicker. This could also be a hand card uh, or a cleaning brush, anything that you know, similar to this, and we're going to drag this across the top. And then we'll turn it around the opposite direction because we have fiber on the flicker now. And we want to, again, drag this across the top so that that fiber gets carded as well. And it, it'll be a little bit hard to see, but when we're done with this, this little section here, it's, it's not gonna have a ton of texture, but it will have just a little bit more texture than the fiber did that had already gone through the drum carter. So it's gonna give us just a, a little a little bit of, uh, not even rough, just a little bit of texture is, is the best way that I can describe it, okay? It's gonna be a little fluffier it's not going to spin out quite nearly as smooth as the rest of this will. So we'll take our brush again. And this is going to be a little trickier to brush. We've got to push down just a little bit more. Remember, we don't have to jam it down so that it gets all the way to the bottom. We just have to make sure that it's below the level of the teeth. Now, last thing I want to do here is take a little bit of this fiber that we had from before. This was our bat that we, we did our base layer with. And I'm going to do a really light layer over the top of the rest of the board. Not this, because we just carded that and that was a little bit thicker. But I'm going to take just a little bit of this, take it over the top, and kind of lock everything in place. I like this. I like doing this. It, uh, it kind of gives everything like a, almost a sandwich feel, right? Like everything's kind of trapped in place between the wool, and we'll get some vegetable matter out of there. And uh, we will brush this down as well. Like I said, this really kind of traps everything into place. Make sure that uh, there's going to be wool all the way around it. When you when that roll egg collapses when we're spinning it, there's going to be wool all the way around this stuff, and uh, it'll all be trapped into place. So I'm going to pull off any excess that I have along the edges here. Anything that's too long, and from these edges here as well. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is turn the blending board, and I am going to put it at the edge of the table this time. And I'm going to grab my two dowels. Okay, so I have a dowel. Move those out of the way. I have a dowel. Uh, this is a half inch wooden dowel, and this is a eighth inch stainless steel rod. Now the reason that we don't just use two wooden dowels is that when you make a Rolag with two wooden dowels, you get an oval preparation rather than a round preparation. Remember, we're trying to get this to collapse around that core of air and create a round yarn. So it's a little bit difficult when you have this oval 
uh, with a S in the middle. It has kind of a figure eight shape. And when you first wrap this around there, uh, it has an, an S in the middle that just doesn't really draft well. So if you've been having trouble with a blending board and you're using the two dowel method, try to get to one dowel and see if those don't draft a whole lot better for you. But I will also show you a trick. Some people have issues with uh, just using one dowel. So you can use this eighth inch stainless steel starter rod and we get that trapped in there. And once the fiber is locked in around the half inch dowel, you can slide this bad boy out. So we call that the starter rod. That's a nice little cheater trick for you. And we have this fiber uh, wrapped all the way around the dowel. And remember I said we're gonna take about three uh, row lags off of here. So we're gonna roll back into about the area that we want and then we're gonna lift and draft. And by lifting and drafting, we're getting that fiber uh, attenuated and drafted around this, this dowel. And you can see it's starting to separate here. So I'm not going to pull away, I'm just going to uh, turn the dowel and draft it right around that dowel. So that fiber is now separated. It's all stuck right there around the dowel and I'm going to firm it up just a little bit. And there is our first row end. And here you can see there's our tussa silk, there's our dyed silk, uh, there's our two uh, little uh, uncarded or unprocessed uh, bits of wool. Then we had our nylon over here, and then we had our wool that we processed by hand. So there's a whole bunch going on there. Uh, when you draft this out and spin this out, uh, it's gonna be a fun kind of a stripey uh, little piece going on. Would really be a, a fun little piece of, of weft for us. So I'll go ahead and do the next two here. I'm gonna take my brush and lift this all up so I make sure that I get all of it. And I will take the starter rod once again and we'll wrap this fiber around here. Once it's wrapped all the way around, remove the starter rod. And again, we're gonna roll in and then lift and draft, lift and draft. And then we lift and we're going to wrap that fiber right around the dowel. And we'll firm it up in our hands again. Just making sure that this row lag stays together once it's off there. I don't want it to be super tight. Again, I really want this to draft well. It should draft like butter, real smooth. So I'm not making it super tight. I'm not gripping it hard on there. Just making sure that it doesn't come apart and disintegrate on us before we get it to the spinning wheel or the drop spindle. So I'll lift this up one last time. And this time I will show you how to do it without using the starter rod. So we're gonna get the dowel in here. We're gonna get our hands and our thumbs all the way across the whole width of the drum part or the blending board. And we just get that fiber wrapped in like that. And again, lift and draft, lift and draft. We wanna get all this on here. You can lift it and re-catch it if you need to. And one more time, so you can see it there. We're going to firm it up and then slide it on off. And let's take a look at what we have. So here we have our three Rolex ready to spin. Uh, all kinds of fancy stuff going on there. Again, this is a woolen style of preparation, so this will make a great weft yarn, weft yarn for us. And we've got all kinds of fun pops of color, texture, and uh, should be lots of fun to spin up, lots of fun to weave. So there you have it. That's the blending board and how to make a fun and fancy uh, preparation for a weft yarn. Thank you for watching. I am Roy Clemis with Clemis & Clemis. Bye-bye now.